Hey guys, it's Boy here and this is Things I Learned with E.G. Sumail's Nature's Prophet in 706. Nature's Prophet is a hero that has been constantly buffed throughout the year, but not everyone seems to find success with it. The hero was played as a position 4 by wings, off lane, safe lane, jungle by retards, and even mid lane. In this game, Sumail starts with a very standard item build, he uses his treants as soon as he responds to scout the lanes, and later on uses the treants at 35 seconds to block the creeps to him. Nature's Prophet doesn't have high move speed and using the treants to block the creeps from the beginning guarantees him an amazing lane position. Because of this lane position, he can actually harass Lone Druid without the Treants taking tower hits, while the enemy has no ways of harassing him because the bear will take tower hits. This block actually gives him amazing lane position for the first wave, uh, but the block was so good that it's hard for him to lose his first range creep. That's usually not very good, but Nature's Prophet is a hero that can actually pressure under tower quite well, and he decides to keep drawing aggro to accumulate range creeps, so that when they are under the tower, he has level advantage as well as creep advantage. Nature's Prophet is so strong at the lower levels that even with Oracle showing up, he repels both heroes. And look how he deals with Lone Druid under the tower. He keeps trying to deny, while he harasses with Treants, and after all is said and done, not only Lone Druid is completely out of HP, but Bob Ross is way ahead in CS than his enemy counterpart. After that, Sumail trades with Lone Druid, but the aggression really starts with his face boots being down. The thing about this particular matchup is that Sumail doesn't want to fight Lone Druid at level 5, because he's going to have level 3 bear with Root, and that's a lot of damage. By playing aggressive right now, not only he forces a point in Savage Roar, that I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Lone Druids usually avoid getting a point of the skill early, he's also abusing the easiest time that he can actually trade hits with Lone Druid. As soon as the Cell gets committed, he face boots to cancel it, and at this stage, he really doesn't care that the bear is hitting him. He forces another bear summon, and LD a hero that is amazing in lane and actually needs those last hits to actually be a menace in later stages of the game is completely crippled right now. With a movement from the supports, they secure a kill on the enemy mid finally, and this is something a lot of Nature's Prophet players don't understand. This hero is weird as fuck in terms of power spikes. He is like the god of the first 9 minutes, especially if he goes mid, since he gets more experience, but there is this point in the game after the enemy has their ults and boots where he becomes terrible. The secret of playing a good Nature's Prophet is leveraging every instance of the vantage you have early on without feeding too much later. For instance, instead of farming a Midas, he goes for a gank on Husker. A lot of people consider Husker the king of early game, but he's only that in a 1 vs 1 and later after getting more levels and having armor. Husker is level 5 right now, and since he checked whether Earthshaker had mana or not, and TP to a good hidden location, they can easily take him down. He doesn't even bother using Sprout, but I want to mention two extra things about this replay that might go unnoticed. First of all, the extra new talisman and Blightstone that increases his early game potential. This hero needs to be making things happen right now, or else in 10 minutes, when you have your Midas and Shadow Blade, you won't be killing Huskar, Timber, Saw, or Laundry. And if you wait even more to farm that Silver Edge, you will probably be against Aegis or you probably already lost the lane of Barracks. I really like that he uses the room time to get a bounty while farming the small camp and going back for another Husker kill. Husker is terrible without allies or armlet at this stage of the game, and since he's still level 5, another easy kill. and he almost gets a kill on Lone Druid right after. But the important here is the mentality that he has in the early game, trying to go for important kills since he actually won the lane in the beginning. On top of it, notice how he is completely ignoring the top lane, even though the tier 1 is actually falling soon. Timbersaw is very hard for him to gank, since Nature's Prophet way of getting kills is blocking heroes with treants and dealing basically physical damage. He has ult, but he already spent it, and Sprout is child's play for Timbersaw. Even with Timber that low in HP since his level 7, this is wishful thinking at best. He has no ult, and even with PL so ring being there, there's no way a kill is happening. Going for kills is basically what Sumail did in the first 10 minutes of this game and I feel like this is one of the only ways to play the hero. Maybe at TA3 actually playing Nature's Prophet as a greedy core in a very specific lineup with 4 other players playing around you was a good idea, but this is not the case for pubs. I also like that Sumail is going for Dagon. While it's not great against Husker, it works wonders against Lone Druid that doesn't like to build an early BKB and also Timbersaw, two heroes that have a bunch of armor. I guess what's very interesting in this game is how much CS Sumail has even though he focused so much in kills. The important part though is focusing on lane CS instead of jungle camps. While Nature's Prophet can farm the jungle relatively well, there's just no reason for you to not be farming mid. You are an early lane dominator and that early gold is what propels you towards the game impact that we're seeing here. Let's take a look on every teleportation that Sumail used until this point. The first one was very close range to assist his team in getting the lone root kill. The second one was ganking Husker. The key twist about this rotation is that he doesn't spend his DP right away to go back. He abuses the fact that the teleport cooldown is big at level 1, farms the jungle 
jungle, steal the bounty to kill Husker again and go back with that same cooldown. A lot of people end up farming jungle because they either go for kills without a TP scroll and then they lose themselves in the jungle waiting for their Midas or their next item, whatever. But afterwards, Sumeo TPs in to kill Timber, and since he has a TP scroll, he can actually leave that situation fast enough to not die, and as he goes back to the lane, he gets another kill opportunity. The important factor is always prioritize the lane. He never farmed jungle creeps with the exception of that waiting period for the second Husker kill, and we're back to one of the last kills we saw. And now we need to talk about the problems Nature's Prophet has. It's always the same thing, you win the early game because that's what your hero does. But the important part here is that Sumeo doesn't even bother going for the low HP Husker in this clip, because his galaxies away from level 5 Husker he killed before, especially with Oracle there. The thing is, look at the difference in network between the two heroes. This is not an optimal trade and this is the problem of Nature's Prophet. You will have these opportunities at hand, but they only give value to your team if you survive, and most of the time you need to chill or engage at the perfect situation to survive. Considering Sumeo's items though, he will play aggressive because he doesn't have farm potential with a Dagon. His choices make sense considering his supports are very aggressive, allowing him to go for this place, but even then you need to be careful. When he respawns, he immediately goes for a kill, look where he TPs this time, it's a way more conservative TP and even then he dies. After Shadow Blade, even though Sumeo looks for an opportunity to use it, he doesn't go for any more reckless plays. In fact, this is the first time he starts to constantly farm jungle creeps. He wants to be off the map, not only because the enemies ideally won't have vision of him TPing through the ganks, but also because he's not that beast that we saw in the early game. Timber saw with a dust can dive him and even smoke ganks are a threat to him. This is the first real gank he goes for and you can notice how they had vision of Lone Druid mid and Timber top, which gives them the security in getting a kill. He also makes sure to TP in the fog and says Oracle was forced to ult himself thanks to Sumail noticing his positioning. They kill Husker, but they can't push against Timber and Laundry. So he goes back to the jungle, while he waits what his team is going to do. There are not a lot of cores he can kill by himself in this game, and going for YOLO support kills will probably kill him, and that's not what he wants. There's no point in trying to take towers either, since they have these relatively mobile cores the enemy team. He just pushes the lane forward when he notices that Raiden is rushing, and the truth is, they can't contest the Roshan, not without Echo Slam. He goes for a cute play, he tries to lure people towards the tier 1 top, while he TPs bottom to for the tier 2 with Earthshaker, but in the end, they couldn't actually take any of them. But that's fine, the strength of Nature's Prophet it's being versatile in item build. You can split push, you can go for disables, you can go for a fighting build, and it's obvious that in this game they need a Silver Edge. PL is not going for it, and Earthshaker will probably take too long to get one. So Mayo plays cautiously until she sees LD pushing the bottom lane aggressively, which probably means that they're going for that lane as a group. Husker is not a hero that split pushes at all. In fact, Raiden's lineup is very good at grouping and taking towers, and this propels Sumeo to go for the tier 1 top. But even when he's quite certain of what Raiden is doing, he TPs in the fog. They trade tier 1s, and since he had vision of CM spells while he was taking the tier 1, and no vision of CM actually grouping up with his team, he finds her with a smart sprout. Radiant obviously keeps pushing, and the way Sumail handles the push is very interesting. And P is not a fighting hero, especially with this build. He is not a full time pusher either, so trying to push faster than a lone druid plus ages Husker is insane. The key factor of this fight is when and where Sumail is jumping the backlines. Until he decides though, he has no fear of pushing top, and this is something a lot of players get wrong. They go back to base before and don't accomplish anything during those seconds of uncertainty, or they just kill themselves trying to push while someone TPs back, or the, the enemy takes the barracks, uh, he's still trying to hit the tier 3, and then someone goes back and kills him anyways. He keeps looking at the bottom lane, and when Shaker initiates in the non-ages hero, and that's really important, he decides to go in. Not only that, but with a TP ready, he easily TPs back to his fountain. Thanks to that and the Silver Edge, they're able to kill Timbersaw, and they hold their base, while Sumail was able to take two towers in the top lane. When the push was controlled, he goes back to the same movements, farms his jungle while he observes the map and what moves he can go for. He only TP'd in the top lane to push it directly when he was positive that the enemy was pushing as a group, and the only reason he goes for it now is because it's pushing towards them while he has vision of Husker and the surroundings. He keeps the push going because of the vision of that ward that spots the enemies walking towards the mid lane. This is the important part. Nature's Prophet can split push, but not like a blink dagger juggernaut or an anti-mage. You really need a good portion 
direction of vision of the enemies to go for plays like this. Usually Sumeo can TP out because they don't have a lot of disables, but if two or three heroes shows up, he's gonna die before he does anything. When a team groups up like that, you can't expect to TP behind them and win a fight, not against the lineup, so he creates as much pressure as he can. Even though it's not much pressure with this item build, the only thing he can do is this, because he's just waiting to see when and how he's going to jump on them. Since his team doesn't initiate, he keeps pushing even though he knows he's lower than the enemies. But this is the smart part, his PL is also split pushing. Pay attention to the heroes in the Dyer's team, every hero that is in the base has possible or multiple ways of cancelling TPs, and even when Earthshaker echoes, Sumail just keeps pushing. If we go back to the other time he was split pushing, Glyph was panned, which means he has no fear for going for this, allowing them to trade barracks in a situation where Radiant was definitely in an advantage. It gets clear that Raiden is going for another push bottom, but thanks to the vision they have, Dyer is able to set up a kill on Londrid and CM. That completely hinders Radiant's play in the bottom lane, and thanks to the nature <laughs> of Nature's Prophet, they get even more kills while Sumeo secures a tier 2 mid. Pay attention that even in this 27 minute pause barracks being down engagement, he was carrying a TP with him. This allows him to proc the Silver Edge on Husker, while also surviving against the enemy team. This is the biggest strength of Nature's Prophet, global presence with versatility in the items he can go for. I'm pretty sure this is not a Dagon Nature's Prophet is back thing, this is basically good item decisions. When he tries to go for slightly more aggressive ganks like this one, he makes sure to bring a TP with him, since in this game there's pretty much no disables and he can disengage with ease. In the end, the game is decided with this play here. PL is forced in the bottom lane, while Dyer knows that Roshan is being attempted. Instead of going directly for the Roshan and trying to win a team fight, something that they are not better than Raiden at doing, so Mayo TPs in the tier 3. This play alone takes LD out of the Roshan pit, and even though they don't get a kill on Timber, this is what they wanted to do, shift the focus of the fight away. He keeps the pressure in that lane, so that Timber and LD stay bottom, and with a TP in the fog, he goes in not just to the Aegis, since he's way weaker than Husker, but to hunt CM or Oracle. Time and time again, we saw Sumeo going for the same play. He's not a pusher, so instead of trying to rat, he forces people to go back, and always TPs in the surroundings of the fight to get the small fries. This reduces the team fight power of Radiant. And finally, with this TP back to the shrine, he actually finds a double damage rune, and this is the only time he goes for a rat play. This, this time though, his team is diving the fountain, which means he has no fear of being engaged, and that's pretty much game. Well guys, I just wanted to say that I had the first session of coaching with PSJ. In the end, I felt like his squad is way better than mine, so I didn't upload uh, that one to my channel. You can check it on his channel. I'm gonna leave the link in the description. Don't forget about the 100k giveaway. We have our cannons, we have replay analysis, drunk casting, a lot of juicy stuff for you to find out. And as of always, Pugin is a platform where you can learn from people like Chessy, Fog, Monib, Waga and get better at the game. You have now great content on the new patch and if you want to raise your MMR, it's just a great time. Just figure out the patch faster than others and get those easy wins. Also, don't forget that if you're struggling on how to improve, they have Oracle, which is just this big new feature or tool that they invented. It has the best analyzing tools I saw in pretty much everything I ever saw about Dota. You need to register on Pugna, but it's free. Just go to the website in the description. You're gonna find it there. It's just, it's pretty cool. I really recommend everyone to use it.